Hello, my name is Hugo Gonzalez, and I'm an application specialist at Mamaki. Thanks again for joining us this month for tips, tricks, and techniques. This month, I'll be showing you a brand new feature, Variable Data Print, that has been introduced with our latest RIP, RasterLink 7. For this technique, I'll be using the new Mamaki RasterLink 7 and printing on the new JV100 with SS21 inks. I'll be designing on Adobe Illustrator and Excel for database input. And I'll be finishing the design in Rasterlink's new variable print function. And thank you to Avery Dennison for supplying us with MPI 1105 Easy Apply Vinyl for the prints. So what is variable data print? Variable data printing refers to the creating and producing of unique images through the merging of images, text information, and numbering through an automated compiling process in Rasterlink. It streamlines the customization process for repeated images that have changing variables. So instead of creating individual print images for changes like names and reference numbers, you can just create the base images and then input the personalized information that you probably already have on a database and then align them to a design template and let Rasterlink handle the merge process. For this application, I'm going to be creating personalized VIP passes. These will be passes to two different events, and they'll be personalized with names, ID numbers, seat numbers, and we'll even have a print shop tracking number. Here's the basic layout for the design. The pink represents where the image will be placed, and the white box on the bottom will contain the personalized information. These next steps aren't necessarily required, but having the plan laid out will expedite the design process in Rasterlink. To begin the layout, I'm going to place text boxes to approximate their location. I'll also fill it out with placeholder text to have the design set. I apologize for the poor design, but I'm displaying various text treatments to demonstrate the options available. Okay, since the origin point is in the lower right on the printer, be sure that your measurements are relative to that corner. I'm going to place the artboard origin on the bottom right. And then I'm going to set the reference point for each of the assets also on the lower right. Once everything is laid out and designed, we'll want to take notes on the design characteristics. For example, the size and location of the text and image boxes, the font name and size required, and any text treatments that you might want to perform. For example, color and stroke thickness. For this first one, I'll first note the position and size of the text box, and then the color, the font, and the fill of the stroke. In Rasterlink, the stroke is only available in whole numbers, so one point is the smallest stroke width. I'm going to repeat the process for each of the text boxes, taking notes on the font and the locations of the boxes. Once we are done, I'm going to remove the placeholder text and I'm going to save the template as a PDF, EPS, or Postscript file. And be sure to use the Use Artboard selection since that was our point of reference. Now we're going to take a look at our database for the variable data. I'm manually inputting values for this example, but in a print shop environment, this database might be created through an online or internal order request system. The important components are that each item have its own column, and references to images have a full location address, including the image extension. To copy the full address, Open the folder where their images are located and just copy and paste the address and then do the same to the image name. I'll be using TIFFs for this example. You can use TIFFs or JPEGs for image files. For this column, I'll be filling it with arbitrary numbers. Currently, the database limit is up to 100 images at one time, 
and each image can have up to 30 variable data points. Once we're done, we'll need to save it in CSV UTF-8 comma delimited or separated format. Be careful in this step. There are a few CSV extension formats, but they're not all the same. Be sure you're selecting UTF-8. UTF-8 is universal standard 8-bit character encoding. This allows text characters to be easily interpreted across many formats and platforms. Now that we have our design and database completed, we can move on to rasterling to print on the JV100. The JV100 is the newest in our solvent line. As part of the new 100 series, it is amongst the highest value machines in the market with speeds up to 677 square feet per hour while being extremely competitively priced. For information on the JV100, please visit our website listed below. Rasterlink 7 has a brand new image processor. While being designed with a similar layout as Rasterlink 6 Plus, it has exciting new features like variable print and a 25% improved PDF processing speed. It's expert printing made easy. Today, I'll focus on the new feature variable print. To begin, all I need to do is load the template we created. After setting the profile and color settings, select the variable edit icon as shown below. Then select the variable edit button to engage the function. And under it, select the database loading icon and search for the CSV file that we created in the last step. In the left column, you should see your database information and on the right, you'll see your template image. To begin the merge process, select a column by clicking on its column name, and all the rows in that column should be highlighted. Now in the center area, at the top, you'll see that it's labeled by type, and this will identify what type of area it is, and it will appropriately display the options available for that type. In this case, it's picture, and you will be able to edit the position, sizing, and scaling if needed. I made the image the full size of the template, so I'll type in 3 inches by 5 inches. When you define the picture area, you'll see that the first image will be shown in the preview on the right. The next column is names. You'll notice that when I select the column, the type changed to text. This opens new editable features auto height resize, font size, and some design options including text outline, drop shadow, and below you'll be able to see the font color and area color options. I will refer to my notes as I begin to lay out the first column's design. As I completed, the first line of information will begin to preview on the right. I'll move on to the second fan number and I'll do the same. For this column, I included an area fill. And for the final column, I'll do the same, making sure to include the preferred colors and stroke thickness.
Scanning the names on the list, I can see that there are two names that are a little longer than the rest. I can click on each name individually to see its preview. If there are any problems, like if the text string is too long, I can individually edit a specific print without affecting the rest. Now let's say that we want to add a number to the prints themselves without having to refer to the printed names or customer information. More of an internal print numbering. We could either add it to the CSV file like the other columns, or we can add an automatic numbering within Rasterlink. All we have to do is select Add Numbering. An edit window will pop up with your options. You can select the start and end value of the numbering, and you can also set the increment gap in between the numbers. Number of digits will automatically add zeros to keep a consistent number string length up to nine digits. And lastly, any prefix or suffix that you may want, like something to identify the customer and the job number, for example. Rasterlink will only populate the rows that currently exist. From here, we can add it to the print like any of the other text boxes. As you can see, I added a small text box and it's cutting off part of the number. We can select the Auto Horizontal Resize option and it'll reduce the font size to have it fit the text box. Once we're done here, we can move on to the layout display. This may look a little differently for each printer, but the general options will be the same. So the first thing I want to do is rotate the image 90 degrees to be efficient with the material. And then I'll rearrange them to the center. I will now separate everything by half an inch on all sides. At this time, if we were to move on to a connected cutter, I would make cutting selections such as ID cut. Unfortunately, at the time of the making of this video, I do not have the ID cut server software for Rasterlink 7, but it will be available soon. Once all of the options are selected, select the rearrangement icon below the layout display to execute our selections. We are now ready to send it to the print by selecting the Execute Jobs Go icon. I had to reset the layout before printing because I had to change the media and this roll of media was more narrow than what I had before. Thank you for attending this month's Tips, Tricks, and Techniques. Please be sure to ask any questions you may have.